to Community TV with a Dare. This is a time where we talk to, well, I talk to people in the community who are doing extra special things to help those people around them. Now, this could be things like yoga class, learning to cook, reading tarot cards, physical fitness or gardening. So whatever you're interested in, it's going to be covered here. Today, it is my extra special, um, it's my pleasure to introduce a real local. It's a guy called Malcolm Haynes. Now, he told me when he gave me his bio, he said, I'm just a guy who likes a free feed. And what better than what nature provides? So wild plants are all around us and many rival domesticated plants for their taste and nutrient levels. So why not enjoy them? Now, this actually got me very, very interested and I went, okay, I want to speak more to this guy. Malcolm's been scrounging free food from parks and from the bush for a while now, and he says he's still kicking. Uh, he actually realised early on the best way to do things is to get on and do them and communicate as you learn rather than get all condescending and preachy about it when you're an expert. I don't actually like the word expert myself because it's what do they say? It's like a drip under pressure, um, and I don't think Malcolm is that. What I'm going to do is bring Malcolm in and he can share his story with you because um, we've got, hi Malcolm, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, how are you? I've got Kalina here as well. She's hi, Hello, dear. Kalina. Lovely, to, lovely to see you again. Now I just have to share that you two, uh, Malcolm is actually, the. this is how neighbourly this gets, Malcolm's is the son of Alan who lives across the road from me and we've been neighbours for well, well over 15 years. So um, Ma um, Alan came over one day, he was very, very excited to see his son and his daughter-in-law and their son in the local permaculture um, magazine. He's actually bought me a colour copy of the article that was written so and I went oh my god I've lived across the road from uh, Alan all these years we've met on numerous occasions when we've celebrated birthdays and whatever and I had no idea until the other day and then I said to your dad Malcolm's got to come on my show <laughs> and here we are and here you are so Malcolm just share a little bit about how you actually got into into PIP um, and uh, and what what you do? So I just I just love what you're about. But share with us in your own words. Uh, the PIP thing came through. Um, somebody put up on Facebook that they were looking for small scale um, urban farmers and very productive gardens to write an article on. So I contacted them and they got back to me, and the rest is history. So there we are. So would you would you consider that? So, what did you call it? Small scale urban farmers. Yeah, that's that's my so, term. Just small, small scale producers is what I call it. Okay, so and I know that you're like, um, well, I mean, I'm saying the bush tucker man, um, because, because you look at you know, when we had the conversation over the weekend, you were talking about um, actually uh, eating weeds. <laughs> <laughs> And, and when I and I'm looking at the uh, the article here, and you're saying that your your garden just looks amazing. Um, so so what what I'd love for you to do is to first share with us how how you identify eat, weeds to eat and what you're doing in your garden because it, it looks like it's absolutely it's lush. Take us on I a ticky tour. But, I will show you. We, and um, I've got Alfredo, Alfredo here. Uh, he's saying hi. He's watching from church. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Alfredo is actually in California. So, oh, we're um, global. Yeah, we are global. Um, absolutely. So, uh, and Malcolm is almost in my backyard, but he's in his front yard, I believe. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want a quick tour first, or a bit of a talk, or, or what? Well, just share. I'm really curious as to uh, why we should be eating uh, weeds rather than domesticated plants. That's got my attention. Well, they're free. 
for a start. <laughs> well, that's, <Yeah. laughs> that works. <laughs> a lot of our domesticated plants are, yeah, bred from what we call weeds now. I'll show you just over mm-hmm. here. We'll go over here and have a look at a couple, which we grow in, in got... garden beds here. I'll just flip I it around. I want to say... Yeah? Yeah, okay. If, I want to say if anyone has any questions for Malcolm... Uh, about urban farming or urban produce and what he's talking about, please type them in because uh, I'm sure Malcolm loves questions. The more questions, the better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, and also share this broadcast because we're sharing information that's going to be a benefit to you and your community. And I, I think after this show, we'll all be able to run out to our our gardens and weed our gardens and then eat what we weed. Perhaps. I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful. So share what you're showing us there. Let me just give you the screen solo so people can see what we're looking at. Okay. So what, right. what, what is that that we're looking at, Malcolm? Well, this plant here, this came from a roadside verge before the hot weather hit. This is Goosefoot. It's a uh, Kenopodium Kinop- album. It's um, closely related to... All of these usual veggie plants that you know, your spinaches, your broccolis, all of that sort of thing. And yeah. But it has a massively larger amount of nutrients. It's got the highest protein level of any plant that we can access. And it's um, lots of vitamin A, more vitamin A than spinach, more iron than spinach. Yeah, so it's a very close relative, but we bred, wow. the spinach, we bred the spinach up to give us really big, juicy leaves. Well, this, this one, they stay a little bit smaller. Uh-huh. Um, you can eat the seeds on this, the, pl- the whole plant. You just cook it like you do spinach, and you'll end up with a hugely increased amount of nutrients in your diet. And wow. it doesn't take it takes half of the effort, less than half of the effort to grow than spinach. Last year, I planted this in a bed with spinach and cabbages and did nothing to them, and the others died, and this thrived. It just went so- brilliantly. So this is called goose foot. Goose foot, yeah. Or they also call it lamb's quarters or fat hen is the other name for it because they use okay. it for hen in some parts of the world and they love it. And so, uh, where, where is this? Is it um, It just grows on the side of the road? Uh, yeah, that's where I got it from. It was about two inches tall and I picked uh-huh. it up and put it into a garden bed and here we've got three foot tall. Okay, so and that just keeps is it, is it just keeps growing, yeah, or does it go to seed, or how does that work? It'll go to seed, but you can eat the seeds as well. Yeah, and they're from. And if we have a look at this next one here, big red one, some of you have probably noticed that from your gardens. Amaranth. Yeah. Yes. Um, Amaranthus cordata, cordata, this one. Um, also, they call it love lies bleeding. Is another name for it. In, in some of name? the garden, love. love lies bleeding because of the red. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And some varieties <laughs> have like redder leaves. Uh, this is the same, almost the same plant as you buy your expensive amaranth seeds from, from the um, from the health food shops. Oh. And you can get up to thousands by yourself. <laughs> so um, what, what, do you, what do you use it? What sort of things do you use it for? Is it – I've got – I've got, 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 got – They'll pop it, they'll pop the seeds, little like little popcorn, and um, charge you an arm and a leg for it. The leaves are edible, highly nutritious as well. Once again, related to goosefoot, related to most of these garden plants that you know. Yes. And they grow in the same conditions. So why grow spinach and things like that, which have hardly any nutrient value left, uh-huh. when you can get things like this that take no water or hardly any water, very little fertiliser, and produce and produce and produce. See, over here now, you can might be able to see this fella buzzing around. Yeah, 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 yes. He doesn't touch these plants. They don't go, they all sort of float around them, but we get no no pest on these whatsoever. No pest so at all. So there is no, um, oh, I've just got Linda saying my daughter is just, and she's actually commenting as my time TV, but it's Linda, my friend from um, up in Darwin. She's saying my daughter has just started eating popped amaranth, and yes, they do charge like wounded bulls. So, 
But here's the plant, or one of the many plants that you can get it from. And yeah, away you go. These seeds are almost ready to come out of the top here. It'd be if I can shake it loose. Yeah. You can probably see the black ones in amongst the red there. See the black yeah. seed there? That's what they charge you for. And so and what do you what do you actually do? You put them in your cooking or you because I'm I really have no idea about this stuff. Um, yeah, I thought milk I thought milk used this? to come from coals. No, no, I grew up on a farm, so <laughs> just cook like normal everyday veggies. Jelena's the um, the cooking expert here. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Jelena. Well, normal European veggies. We just use them the same way. Use them in stir fry. Yes, yeah, stir fries. Yeah. And yes, amaranth. Darwin, yeah. Somebody's just asking, does it grow in Darwin? Yes, it does. Yeah. So that's that. That's uh, Linda is actually asking if it grows okay. in Darwin because she's up there. So that's uh, that's pretty amazing to think that you can just because we we've, we've got you know more like I said I'm I'm, I'm good at growing weeds. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and and Linda's going groovy. Um, <laughs> I'm really good. I'm, I'm really good at growing weeds, um, and I can I can kill spinach as hardy as that is. But I'm actually thinking that um, that next time you're across at your dad's, just um, I'll, I'll go. I'll find some goosefoot and I'll put some of that in because I think that's actually going to be. Yeah. Um, see if I can find some for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, the big challenge will be to see if I can if I can keep, keep it alive as easy as you say <laughs> I might be able to. Would be, um, and then we can we can actually come back and we can report on the progress of the goose for it because. <laughs> so can you can you, you actually can uh, eat, you can just have it in salads as well as yeah. cooking. So yeah. yeah, but it does do shrink a lot when you cook them though. So we we bred spinach to have nice big leaves, whereas these these will actually shrink and and um, you end up, you'll pick a big handful and you end up with a mouthful. The nutrient levels are there. <laughs> I'll just show you a little. We've got just on here, Swiss chard. Yeah. And right next to each other in the same bed. They get the same conditions. Same. Uh -huh. and so you can see the Swiss chard is, is quite small. Yes. And amaranth is going. This is a different kind of amaranth. This is the one you'll see as a weed, Amaranthus viridis, green amaranth. Yes. But you can see that's going crazy. And the other one, it's just doing okay, but um, not not as well as the amaranth. So my question is, why not grow it? Why not? Yeah, I think that's not? amazing. Yeah. So what, what other goodies have you got? Go for it, um, yeah. We've got purslane or pigweed. What is they that? Oh, pig. It's a, yeah. a sprawling, sprawling plant, grows on the ground. Uh -huh. um, Thick, juicy leaves, thick stems, highest levels of omega-3 fatty acid in of any other plant around here. And what's and that called? Purslane or pigweed. Okay. And, and, that's, and that grows, that just it grows just, on the side of the road? The, it likes disturbed areas. It likes just um, growing in front lawns, loves people's lawns. Most of these things love people's lawns. Yeah. Uh, this highest level of omega-3 fatty acids and alpha linoleic acids, and you can eat it cooked or in a salad. Some people even get these big, thick stems. It, it, looks, a bit, it looks a bit like parsley, or is that, I'm just trying to – I'll have to look about watch it back on the big screen, but where I'm looking at it now, it just looks – And that's purslane there. Oh, okay. So I was actually looking at parsley. <laughs> there you go. My camera works. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we cleared that up because I would have been out there looking for parsley. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> eventually. I Could you want to go for stuff. Oh. Yeah, please do. Take us for a while. I've actually got a scrolling thing across the back here saying, what questions do you have for yeah. Malcolm? Because it's an opportunity now uh, to, I didn't realise how much I'd actually lived under a book 
a bush or a rock. I mean, that's a bad pun. Um, but in terms of my knowledge with this stuff, because it's just uh, it's just amazing. I'm finding it fascinating, and I think you could. Um, it's just. And all so this knowledge is out there. Just ask, ask a question on Google or go to YouTube. It's all there. Easy yeah, to find. yeah. I think some sometimes we don't even know what questions to ask. That's because we don't know. And I know actually when we, I was going to school with a, uh, a lovely girl called Sandra and her father, this was in the country where I grew up, and her father was um, uh, old school Italian and he, he used to make his own grappa, which <laughs> I won't tell any stories about us sneaking out at lunchtime when we're in our final years at school and having a couple of nips. But anyway, that's another story for another time. The... Um, but he would go, he would get the thistles from the back lawn and he would make salads yep. out of the thistles yeah. and, and the nasturtiums. Uh, we, we found that was really interesting as well because back then my grandma used to use, the, like, eat nasturtium leaves and, and the flowers and that they always thought she was a bit of a weird hippie because that was, this was back in the 70s. We've <laughs> so. got the same oils in them that mustard has. So you're getting the same, exactly the same taste and the same effect. Yeah, I know. And we, we actually do have them down, growing down this uh, springtime there. Uh, they go nuts down the back of our, our property. And uh, I just go and I actually I do now pick the, the leaves of nasturtiums and, and I use them in my smoothie, my daily smoothie that I have. And they do have a really, really nice peppery taste so a lot of these tastes you know you've got to get used to them sometimes but when you do mm-hmm. your body just knows that it's doing the right thing yeah so take us on a tour take us on a tour yeah. while you're doing that uh, i just want to say that your your page is called legaya legaya yeah legaya and this actually means happiness in uh, your wife's native language Talab, yeah. Yeah, Talab. So there we go. I've got that one that's going across the screen. So there's Julia. <laughs> She's like lighting this. So, oh, this is awesome stuff. All right, so flip yeah. the camera around. Take us on a tour because I also want to know about you going up vertically. Oh, yeah. So important. I'll yes. start off here right by the door. This is our little uh, nursery area because it's right by the door and in shade. And we're growing ginger, galango, um, turmeric, all in these beds here. Sweet yeah. potato, three different kinds of sweet potatoes there. There's a whole bunch of Australi- Australian native lemongrass as well. Wow. So, ambigua. We've got a, lo- a local grass here, which is a lemongrass substitute, and it grows wild too. Wow. So you can see yeah, straight away we're going up, 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 up with yes. everything. Yeah, how do you how do you go with keeping the um, the water, like water and that up to the um, ones in pots? Because I think that would be a bit of a challenge for me. Because well, it's all done by hand. But it's you all use done. The, by hand. But you use a self watering yeah. pot or the spider pots. There was a spider in that one. They'll last yeah. two or three months between waters. And the yeah. rest of the garden, we've got drippers. We've got wicking beds. So these beds here that you can see tree along there and a series in here they're wicking beds so they've got a water reservoir at the bottom and the yes. water you water into the bottom through these pipes and then the water comes up through the soil to the plants so you're losing less to it. it it's very water efficient it takes a I little bit it. of money to get you've got to pay for the steel and the or water whatever you're using and um, the the soil to go in there but once they're established Oh, they slice your watering time and effort for by an enormous amount. Yeah, I think that would be, and 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 you also save. Well, I would imagine because you've got your your plants aren't dying like <laughs> like <Right>. mine would. <laughs> yeah. So, you see, it kicks up a lot. And you yes. see this little area here. This is just what the little area closest to the house. It's absolutely packed, dense, complicated planting with. Diverse species. Diverse species yes. cuts down the number of bugs in there. We've got big eggplants here. We've just harvested from those yesterday, so we can't mm-hmm. show you what's on there. But oh, there's one. One at the back there. 
there you go. Yeah, see, there's a bit of dark, there's a bit of shade there, so yeah, you can just right. see the outline of it. So, see, we've yeah. got a six died back a little bit in summer in the heart, but you can see we've got a ground yeah. level, then the wicking beds, and everything goes up. We've got three or four oh. levels to everything in here. Wow. So, we've got ground covers and mulch to perennial ground covers to protect the soil and keep the moisture yeah. in. Like, um, things like sweet potatoes, because we eat the sweet potato leaves as well as the um, as the tubers. The leaves. So how, how do you do that? We just, just slice and dice them in salads and use them as uh, spinach and a substitute as well. Yeah, I, I keep spinach, but that's the one most people seem to know when I do my talks and that. So that's why I mention <laughs> it. <laughs> but sweet potato leaves have more nutrients in as well. Okay. Is that amaranth. Jolina in the background? Jolina in the background. That's an amaranth. Using... Oh, so, man, how big is that? That goes up about four metres now. Wow. That's actually a weed. This one I didn't plant. It came into the garden on its own, and I was curious as to what it was, so I let it grow and grow yeah. and grow and grow. And grow. <laughs> and grow. But so you, you just, you just pop out. What I'll so be doing, seed, collecting the seeds, yeah, collecting the seeds, and then we'll be planting them, putting them in front of people's windows. So people who don't have a lot of money and things like that, we'll try and plant them along with things like Jerusalem artichokes, like these big tall fillers there. Really fast growing, indestructible plants. They should shade yeah. people's windows and keep the um, keep the heat out in summer. They're all wow. summer plants. Use food as well. Then you can eat them. Yeah. So, so the whole garden. So, There's Jelena in the now, garden. There so the, <laughs> maybe back at you. So so this is a. It's not a huge block either. It's not. Um, this is. Is this your front yard? The whole block, including the house, is about just about three hundred and fifty square meters. Area yeah. that we've got in the front yard. I'll just pick up a little bit here. <laughs> When you take in car parks and paths and that, it's only 60 square metres. Wow. So just in 60 square metres. But dense planting and vertical, think vertical. Keep going and, up, up. And everything's and, edible. And Absolutely companion planting. Um, um, if you have enough diversity in the planting, I don't think you need to worry about companion planting. Okay. But, but, yeah. Um, Really, really, yeah, it does work. Companion planting is fine, but I, I think if you've got a really diverse garden and a really diverse setup, then you don't have to concentrate on it so much. You don't have to plan as much. This was all thoroughly planned at the very beginning. There's yes. a couple of people to keep people occupied. Are they, are they the new additions to your family? Yeah, the new additions, yeah. These are our puma They They're they make white well, they, they make poo. They have a lot of rabbit poo, good fertiliser. And then yes. that drops down below that. I'm getting a bit of glare on the screen here. That's all right. I can still see it okay from here. That drops into a worm farm. The worm oh. Farm from the rabbits. And we get a beautiful, beautiful fish fertiliser out of it. So once again, Amazing. stacking. So two different things, vertical in a small space. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people who also they do... Goats, and then what the goats do falls into the chickens, and then that <laughs> falls into worm farm. So they've got the triple stories, but um, oh, really? I didn't want to go that far. Oh, just how do you, animals, how do you put, is, I'm just visioning a goat in a cage, which just doesn't. <laughs> oh, they work. They work. <laughs> a goat in a cage pooping on a chook. <laughs> yeah, they poop and then. Chooks are pretty um, indiscriminate, but it works. The system works. But I, I think that's just turning the animals into production machines, and they're not really pets anymore. I like ours to yeah. be pets as well. So and Marlon likes them. Well. We do. I'll take you over and show you the chooks. <laughs> we were starting to lock them in because we tried free ranging them on the block, and they're mm -hmm. just so destructive. So much damage. But who's out and oh, about? Man. I can hear. Where are you? Oh, they're all under. Hey, can you see them there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
That's yeah. Mercy is the red island red. Pappy is the brown one behind. And there's a black one called Yuri hiding in there somewhere. Uh, I put a fan up with the solar panel there. They like to sit in front of the fan on days like today under the oh, shade. So they've, got their, they've got their own fan, did you say? Fan, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> In my, le- in my next life, Malcolm, I'm going to come back as one of your chickens. <laughs> oh, these, these are pampered. I've got a, a series of videos on YouTube about Mercy here. She's quite vocal. And sometimes yeah. I'll come and ask her questions on things and record them. And she'll talk away for <laughs> five minutes and answer everything. So that's that's old. Old. Yeah. She's quite pop. Well, not really popular because we haven't got many viewers. But um, well, oh, people will have. She's quite talkative, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So and so then you um, you collect the poop yeah. and you collect the eggs. Are they they layers? Obviously, layers. Yeah, yeah. They're coming now. Yeah. They've gone back. <laughs> Usually, they're really. Anybody comes to visit, they're hiding. But maybe TV is a bit too intimidating for them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not ready. Quite ready for. Um, for, for this fun. level of uh, stardom or fame just yet. So. That's, that's right. YouTube's as much as I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome. I, Malcolm, we've just about done our half an hour. <laughs> and uh, community. Over here as well. So just to let you know, you can grow natives this way. Native so, plants. What have you got there? What have you got there? Oh, and, um, cut leaf mint. And there's yeah. some mantra. Cut those back though. A couple of salt bushes. Uh-huh. Um, all good stuff. And these uh, I trade with a local cafe, a local restaurant for yes. free coffee. I was swapping for coffee. Hey, that sounds like a really good deal. What do you it's do with bu- your surplus? You've got abundance there. What do you do with your surplus? Um, I used to put it on those grow free carts, but now uh-huh. I just give it just give it to people directly. Yes. But, we have a lot of surplus, really. We're, we're kind of efficient in producing what we want. Uh-huh. And, and a lot of it goes back into back into the garden. Uh-huh. But if anybody wants anything, they can always just come and ask. Yeah. That's all. But uh-huh. um, Marlon's our cook, my, our, old, our son, but he's, he's a bit camera shy, so he didn't come out today. He's okay. Hiding. But he does – he's a cook. He uses the um, – Everything from the garden as well, and he's cooking. Yes. And yes. Is, um, well, we've got – she does field trips for the university. She does yes. – she's a camp. A lot of their veggies for those come from this garden as well. Okay. So that's uh, with the – when she's working with the Indigenous – Yeah. Um, yeah. Down the Kurong. Down the Yeah. So your, your – um, your watering system, you've got, I see a big tank there. We've got 4,000 litre tanks. It's a bit awkward to have a really big tank here because um, it's just a small yeah. block. So we've got 4,000 litre tanks. They're all connected together with pipes and pumps so I can balance out the water level. So I think there's yeah. nothing worse than having one full tank and one empty tank. Mm-hmm. And the over- you see all the overflow from the full tank when it's raining and nothing's going in the empty tank. Oh, okay. So. It rains, I balance that what's in the what's in the tanks and then we maximize that. So we'll probably get about an extra twenty percent during the year of the yes. rain that we oh. and it works out quite a bit because for every square meter of roof space, for every millimeter of rain that falls, you get about a, a liter of water. Just okay, under a so liter. That, uh, it sounds like you it's uh, quite a an, an efficient system that you've got going there. Well, that's a good thing it's with like, small gardens. You can be efficient. You can make yes. them very – when you've got big sprawling yeah. blocks, you can produce more, but often it's at the expense of efficiency. It really looks like there is a huge abundance of everything there. <laughs> you can work a things for a couple of hours if you want. <laughs> well, we're out of time today, so I'll get you to swing the camera back around. <laughs> okay. I just didn't want people. Um, to, I just didn't want people to have this my ugly mug in the in the picture there. No, so no, I think I think um, just ask people if you're watching the replay just to share the broadcast as well, and if you were watching 
Uh, if you're in live today, um, you've had your chance to ask questions, and now you blow it over. So <laughs> I just want I want to thank you, Angelina, um, Malcolm. You are amazing. I just go when when you realise that what we've got at our fingertips, which is you know across the road for me. Um, it's just amazing, and I want to have you back on the show again. Actually, I can see you having your own show because I think this information um, is uh, there's there's so many more questions that I want to ask you that we will book you in again because I yeah. do want to. Uh, I'll, I'll write out a list of questions, and I'll I'll actually get questions from people that uh, watch the replay as well. So please, if you have any questions. <laughs> Pop them in the comments, and especially if you're watching the replay, because this man is a wealth of information, and uh, and he's willing to share. I'll improve my camera so, work. So, well, I think I think it's um, if if you're a gardener, I think your camera work was pretty good actually, because we we're sort of doing it on the spot, and this is the beauty about live TV, uh, live broadcasting, is that we. You know, we, we actually come up to speed with our skill sets on many different things very quickly to get the message out there. So we're faced with opportunity that we've never had before. Now, Malcolm, you have got the page um, Lagaya. Lagaya, <laughs> I would get that, means Lagaya. happiness. And now I've, I've put a link to it above here in the the comments, uh, the, the body of the post. So if you want to pop over, have a look at Malcolm's page, Angelina's page as well, give it some love and just see. The, you actually are quite like your sense of humour because even just having a look at it, it's, it's fun. It's a fun page, very entertaining, very informative and educational as well. So I think you've got the right mix. We'll, <laughs> we'll definitely... Have you back on the show again, and uh, and I look forward to you getting your own show up and running. Because if you haven't thought about it before, I think you need to. So <laughs> we'll be putting some of Julina's recipes up online as well shortly. Now she's managed to settle down with her PhD a little bit. Well, Jolena, you're invited to come back onto my time TV live community TV with Dare, and I would love to see uh, do a special of you preparing a dish with what you've got in the garden. Would you do that? I'll be doing it in the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try and work it so that it's at the time where we can do a live broadcast uh, for for two Wednesday. So I'll talk to you a bit more about that offline, but I think I'd love to have you back to do that because I think it's a beautiful compliment to what you're doing in the garden and um, and then in the kitchen. So that would work beautifully. So we will talk about doing that uh, sometime soon. So. Thank you very much, both of you. Appreciate your time and uh, sharing your wisdom and expertise with us. And uh, we will see you uh, probably when you're over your dad's or <laughs> pop out and say hi. Say hi next time. Don't <laughs> no worry. Thank you both okay. very much. Bye. Bye. Bye for now. Thanks. There you go. And that was Malcolm Angelina Haynes from Legaya. Um, you'll find their page up above in the post there. Please hop on, give them some love, get involved with what they're doing because it is amazing. It's just opened my eyes an amazing amount about what we can do with the uh, the weeds that um, that we can we can find freely available. Malcolm was telling me before um, about how he does park walks and he takes people through local parks and says here where well, you can buy, you can you can dig this weed up and you can eat this and this is how you do it. So there's a whole heap of stuff, information that you'll find on their page. The link is above. I really appreciate you jo jumping in. Share, please, because I think this is exciting stuff. I'd love to talk to uh, Malcolm again. I will be talking to Malcolm again, Angelina. Uh, at some point in the not too distant future. Thank you very much. This is Adair Palmer and you're uh, with Community TV with Adair on MyTimeTV.live. We'll see you again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Australian Central Daylight Time. Bye for now. <laughs>